Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you Yagsource vs Volhati in round 2 of the second community patch tournament. The map is Medare and on the allied side Yagsource has chosen the 3rd Canadian Infantry. And on the Axis side Volhati has chosen the 16th Luftwaffe. This is played on the community balance mod, you can find a link in the description for all of the details and all of the changes to the divisions in the game due to the mod. But in this case, the third Canadian, they have the price buff to the Shermans to work with, I think. And on the Axis side, the 16th Luftwaffe, they have buffs to their AT guns, like the Pack 38s and the Pack 40s. There has been an increase in veterancy across the board. So that may give the 16th Luftwaffe some better AT options as the game moves forwards. But we'll have to see if Vohati actually utilizes those or sticks more to his infantry playstyle, which is something that uh, I very much expect to see. Uh, things like uh, Luftwaffe of Pioneers, Luftwaffe Jäger, uh, supported by things like Panzerstrex and the Luftwaffe Führer. And that sort of combination is going to be really what Vohati uses, I think, in these forests in order to make some ground. But he is going to have to find smoke from somewhere. I think the 16th can get mortars early on. But if he relies on things like FKs, then smoke might be uh, sparse throughout the game. So let's have a look at some of these units going down anyway. On the side of Vohati here, we have a couple of units of infantry supported by a Stier 42. There's going to be a Flak Panzer Bren, uh, what looks like potentially an FK. Then we have the Command Infantry following up. On the bottom side, it looks like a couple of units are going to be replaced here. This could be Luftwaffe Jäger or Luftwaffe Pioneers with some command there. Then we see the Panzerstreck. There's going to be two more units of infantry with a command. So that's likely going to be like two groups of infantry and command heading to the mid and bottom side. Over on the side of Jag Source, we see two units of Humber Mark III's with the recon there. You've got two rifles. There's going to be command with a command infantry. And then we've got the Stormtroopers, Wasp Mark II, Staghound AA, and a rifle squad. Up on the middle row is going to be two Piats purchased at the start with the two units of rifles and stormtroopers. And on the very top side it's going to be a unit of sniper scouts with the rifles and a six pounder. Let's have a look at when these units are going. So a relatively even spread from Jag Source for sure. I'm going to be trying to rely on the Humber Mark III's at close range uh, for the AP support because otherwise there's not really too much to work with here. There's no a T gun on this bottom side so a tank pushing through here could be quite difficult to deal with but since he's up against the 16th Luftwaffe the only tank that he would have to deal with is the Schur 42 and it's unlikely to try and press through this bottom side since it does have a lack of machine guns to work with and what makes things like the Shermans really strong at close range especially against infantry is because they have 50 cows and two 30 cows so they can pin down infantry very fast whereas a Stier 42 although it does have a 15 HE power gun still requires two shots and the machine gun doesn't do too much in the meantime so that can be really difficult to work with anyway the six pounder is going to be engaging the Luftwaffe Jäger before they unload but uh, did not get the kill so that has exposed the six pounder on the top side Mohati well, moving his uh, Luftwaffe Pioneer here now into these trees Trying to prevent Yagsource from making any more ground because Yagsource has found a plus one already. The Wasp here is going to be pushing up. Going to be very much down to the Luftwaffe Jäger to find the kill with the Faust Patron if it wants to stop a breakthrough down here because there's a very good opportunity for the Wasp in this case to just fast move through here, get the flames onto the Luftwaffe Jäger and just create a massive salient if uh, Yaxus goes for it. But he is waiting for his recon to get into position, which is relatively smart. Um, it's just you can always try and go for little plays with things like the Wasps because they only cost 30 points. Staghound A has been moved up into this field, and it looks like these rifles are going to be making a push down the side of the tree line. Now what Yaxus is trying to do here is use the rifles to expose the infantry in these trees and then allow the stag count to provide its its uh, machine gun support. So if the rifles get engaged, what the Axos will likely do is try and move them out of the trees, draw the pioneers towards him, and then allow the stag count AA to use its 50 cal and 30 cal to pin them. 
rifles here are taking a little bit of damage uh, from that grenade. Quite a bit of damage, actually. But did not get binned down, so no real chance for the Lafayette Pioneers to take advantage there. And Yagsos are backing up. Pioneers do not want to be revealed to the Stagcound AA, so Vorhati's infantry micro is certainly paying off there. FK288, looking for more HE shots onto the rifles here. Well, looks like it's actually going to be Stuff 42 and the FK288 firing at the 6 pounder with fire position command. Stuff 42 going to have to be careful with the engagement at that range. Look at these Luftwaffe Jäger though. I don't know where they're going. But they're getting pinned down very quickly by the sniper scouts and uh, killed off due to the high lethality of that sniper rifle. 6 pounder has been pinned with the FK288 coming in with its shots. Indirect fire that is. And then the Stuff 42 continuing with its fire position command. So looks like Vuhati is going to try and make a play on the top side. Double Stuff 42 now there. On the bottom side it's just going to be Luftwaffe Jäger. And they've now been discovered by the rifles. Wasps coming in hot. Quite literally with that napalm. And we may see these Luftwaffe Jäger go down. Unless the Luftwaffe Jäger can find the Faust Patron shot. They cannot. They're going to be surrendered. And that's a huge salient on the bottom side now for Jagsauce and with that play made well Jagsauce is going to start getting very aggressive with his mobile units on this bottom side but the Panzerstreck will take care of the command carrier to stop that from breaking through it does reveal its position which may allow uh, Jagsauce to kill it off in future but here goes the Wasp trying to make as much ground as possible as quickly as possible meanwhile on the top side uh, double, Yag uh, double um, Luftwaffe Jäger pushing onto Jagsauce the got, you've got the 6-pounder here that's struggling to deal with the Stur 42s. The double Stur 42 can very much wreck a, an unvetted 6-pounder. The command has been removed from this top side. Uh, Left off of Pioneer, they are going to manage to kill the, the Stormtroopers in one hit there. Very, very nice job. Not good enough micro from Source to avoid the grenade from the uh, Left off of Pioneer squads. The trouble is, if you move the Stormtroopers too quickly, then the Luftwaffe Pioneers will manage to get the shots on target. But that's going to be a pin onto the Luftwaffe Pioneer there. Rifle leaders are going to be found by the Luftwaffe Pioneer. And these rifle leaders, they could go down. And if they do, that could be devastating for this engagement. The Stormtroopers, they are not on an attack move order. And that is really, really bad from Source Because it means that that Stormtrooper squad almost died to the uh, Panzergenführer for no reason whatsoever. Luftwaffe Pioneer, they are going to get surrendered, but now that's going to be one Luftwaffe Pioneer versus the Rifles and Stormtroopers. Meanwhile, on the top side, while well, Rifles have been uh, found and taken care of, the 6 pounder is dead, so the Double Stir 42 doing quite well, although the Piat is going to manage to hit the Flak Panzer brand. Nice hit there. Uh, Luftwaffe Jäger swiftly cleaning that up, though. Stir 42 now engaging the Sniper Scouts. They're going to want to get out of there as the UE 630 Citroëns uh, moves forwards. And that's going to find this uh, six pounder that's going to be forced to fall back. So, breakthrough for Yagsos on the bottom side is giving him 57% territory lead. But Vorhati definitely making moves on the top side with a double Stur 42, something that I did not expect to uh, really see uh, moving into this match. FK288 now going to be trying to pin down that six pounder so the Stur 42s can finish it off, or maybe some of the infantry can move forwards. We're also seeing another unit here come in that is going to be a Flak 37. Providing some AA support and the Flak Panzerbrenn there as well. But this bottom side is pretty precarious at the moment for Vohati. He has brought in the Pack 38. This has been increased in veterancy. Uh, that would be two star with command now, whereas before it would have just been an unvetted Pack 38. There's going to be another one brought into the very bottom side. And the idea here with these uh, Pack 38s, excuse me, um, is to kill off the light vehicles, so the Hummer Mark III's, and basically prevent them from creating bigger salience than they already have. So this is just containment here for Vahati, whilst he continues to press on the top side and hopefully make more ground in this area. But with the ram on the way, Vahati is going to be in a little bit of a predicament because... The FK really can't engage the ram very well in the front armor. 
and this ram can quite easily take out like things like the Shichurungs and the Flak Panzer Bren. It also has the 11 AP to penetrate the Stur 42 at the 1000 meter range. So although that's a very slim chance of penetration, it will cause the Stur 42 to be forced to fall back. The Ram 2 is going to take a shot, it actually misses the Flak Panzer Bren. Stormtrooper is now moving up to engage some of this infantry. But uh, not anything else happening there other than those, I think that was rifles getting surrendered by the Flak Panzer Bren. But Yag Source here, it looks like one of his Hummer Mark 3s has been taken out. If he loses the second one, he could start to lose some serious ground on this bottom side. Because there isn't really much of substance, he's just got a couple of rifle squads here and there. And once those are gone, well, the salient could easily break back. So, Vohati's been doing what seems like more damage throughout the game so far to Yagsource's units. And again, with the 6-pounder going down there, well, it's only adding to the kill count. And this is where kill-death ratio can really start to take an effect. Because, although Yagsource did manage to make a salient, it was only by taking out one unit. Whereas, when Vohati pushed on the top side, it was taking out multiple units. And so Vohati at this point in the game probably has a lot more kills overall. The transmission damage there onto the U3, uh, UE630 as the Humber Mark III takes shots. Uh, but that is going to have to back off, especially with the addition of these Pack 38s On the top side, we do see now a Flak 41 coming in. That's going to be providing more anti-air fire, maybe even just providing a... a or AT down the middle road here. We'll have to wait and see. The Luftwaffe Jäger, they're engaging uh, these rifles. Don't have any commands, so they could be pinned down shortly. Uh, but the Luftwaffe Jäger, they're actually going to take out a unit of infantry before it unloads with the Faust Patron. So really, really nice job there. Ram doesn't have any HE on its main gun, so it is slowly but surely being pinned by the Flak 43. That is not good stuff. <laughs> the ram's just being beaten back. That's a big problem with the ram, is that it doesn't have those HE shells. If it did, then that Flak 43 would be very dead right now. Either way, the Humber Mark III is going to be engaging the Fusiliers, the rifles here. Uh, also being hit by that machine gun though. They might find themselves pinned, but the U-304 not really the fastest vehicle to look for a surrender. And it looks like it may happen the other way around as the Humber does get the better of the Luftwaffe Fusilier before the rifles get pinned. That's also going to be another unit of recon down here. Does reveal another unit of rifles in the meantime, but not going to be anything too much to worry about for Yag Source. These UE 630s are causing a little bit of problems uh, for these infantry squads because they can't make any ground. But what Fohati is trying to do here is just sneak his pack 38 forwards and uh, maybe take shot at the Hummer Mark III. Because if that's gone, then those UE 630s can continue to push forwards. Well, nice hit there by the Stur 42. does take the Stormtroopers down to two men. Uh, that will open up the possibility for the Luftwaffe Jägers to press forwards. Here comes that 88. And if it's unloaded into this orchard alongside the... Uh, Flak 43, then the ram will lose its presence on this top side quite significantly. There is going to be a sexton brought in already by Yaxos. One very uh, good strength of the Canadians in Phase B is those two-star sextons. And if Vohati invests in a lot of these 88mm AA and the FK-288s, then the sextons can take care of those quite easily due to their two-star veterancy, which rapidly increases their rate of fire. The Luftwaffe Pioneers, they are going to clean out some more infantry here. And you can see there's a little break back from Vohati. He's pushing it now to a plus one in his favor. Yagsos previously having the lead for the entire game with 746 points in his pocket. But uh, Vohati now changing that and the weapon jam onto the Humber Mark III is going to take away that effectiveness. Luftwaffe Jäger taking out the Piat there. And the Pac-38 still pushing forwards here. With the Citerong, it's not going to be long until these rifles get found, especially if these Opal Blitzes are driving right past them. We'll have to wait and see if that actually does reveal them or not. The Fafa Fusilier, they're engaging these rifles at close range. And, well, the Canadian rifles, they only have 5 HE at close range. 
whereas the Luftwaffe Fusiliers have eight. So if the Fusiliers move into the 100 meter range here, they will win that engagement. But they're also going to win at range as well with the 6 HE compared to the 4 HE. So rifles just really do lose out across the board to the Luftwaffe Fusiliers. Sexton now going to be engaging the AT-8. Going to try and take that out, allow the Ram 2 to uh, take some shots once again at the Stur 42s and the Flak Panzer Brent. But slowly but surely, it looks like Vohati is creeping up this FK-288 and that might find a shot at some point onto the Ram 2. And at closer range, it, it can do quite a significant amount of damage. It does have 9, hate, or 9 AP base damage and that's at 1,200 meter range. So if that engages at, say, for example, the 1,000 meter range, it will actually be an 11 AP AT gun. So Luftwaffe Pioneer take out another Piat. There's another Piat going down in the middle. All those Piats dying all over the place. These rifles now in trouble as well. They're actually going to get surrendered. And another unit of rifles has been found, but Vohati has completely dominated this map with the 16th Luftwaffe. He has used his awesome infantry micro to bring this back on the bottom side it has actually been a nag of 4500 brought in with the 37 mil aa gun and these are pretty cool because they're little armored trucks rather than the normal trucks which are not armored but this could be a bit of a weird position for this truck because there's not much to support it so the rifles here are going to end up getting the better of the Luftwaffe Jäger with the help of the Kangaroo. But now that nag should probably move back until some of these reinforcements arrive. So the FK-288 here going to be taking a shot at the Kangaroo. It does actually end up missing. Now has an attack move down the tree line. Going to have to be pretty careful. Does manage to find the bailout. Oh, nice rocket strike there as well from the Focke-Wulf 190. Really, really good job. And the HS129 coming in with the shot onto the kangaroo as well. Did that also kill the command carrier? That was very, very smart. Um, so the Focke-Wolf here going to finish off the Spitfire Mark 9. Those 25 HE power rockets really hitting the mark. And, well, the Focke-Wolf also finding that kill. So what a play right there. That was awesome to see from Vohati. And he's going to continue to use the Focke-Wolf to strafe as well. Also seeing the HS129 come in for a side shot onto the ram. Yagsos does just about manage to turn that away in time. HS129 now completely out of ammunition, but the ram on its uh, back foot, that's for, for sure. Bockwolf now coming in with a straight run onto the Humber Mark III. That's going to allow the Flak Panzer Bren to force that back. Not necessarily get a kill, but uh, certainly remove some of the pressure there. Meanwhile, on this bottom side, the nag is now being pressed on by the Humber Mark III. That needs to get out of there if it can. Does just about manage to get behind the tree line in time. These Luftwaffe Jäger are going to have to get into position if they want to prevent that nag from dying. HS-129 should probably be evac at this point because there's not really much reason to have that flying about. It can, of course, still strafe units on the ground, but as we can see here... It was quite simply just waiting to die to the hands of the Spitfire Mark IX. The Flak Panzer Brenno and the Flak 43 are able to uh, pin down this Spitfire Mark IX quite nicely. So that will allow the Fock Wolves to shoot that down. And the second Spitfire also going to be suffering the same fate, most likely. These Fock Wolves are so damn good at shooting down enemy aircraft. Uh, I'm not actually sure this Focke-Wolf will be able to get on the back of the other Spitfire before it escapes uh, due to the turning circle. We'll have to wait and see. But if he manages to shoot down another Spitfire, um, then that could be absolutely dreadful for Jagsource as Vohati continues to build up his air force. Like double Focke-Wolf 190A8 BR-21s is really scary to deal with. Um, so that Spitfire did manage to get out anyway. So maybe it can come back with a, another Spitfire in uh, phase C or phase B. And um, that will allow Yaxos to take control of the skies. But that is the least of his concerns right now, especially considering uh, all of his ground forces are slowly but surely being ripped apart. The Ram 2 is still live on this top side, but it's not really done too much. It got brought in. 
It couldn't find the shots on the Stur 42. It actually ended up getting pinned down by a Flak 43. And that's really not what you want to see um, as the third Canadian player in this game. So the Pack 38s have slowly but surely made their way up, which is going to prevent these Humbers and, and the uh, Kangaroo here from, from doing as much damage on the bottom side. And with both of these units out of the way, the infantry will be able to continue to push forwards, and I would not be surprised yet to see Vohati bring in some more reinforcing infantry that can uh, push and continue to create a salient. So the Kangaroo does end up pinning down the Luftwaffe Pioneer. It's going to be going for the kill onto the Luftwaffe Führer, though, and that's a, a good choice of target so that if these other units get pinned down, he can then fast move and surrender both those units. Now, there's going to still be a plus three, though, for Vohati at the moment and with nine minutes left until victory that is a significant lead or oh, the fk here tried to take a shot at the ram at close range the luftwaffe jaeger actually missed the faust patron that is not good for vohati he's lost the fk and potentially the luftwaffe jaeger there not quite as they do not get pinned in time by the rifles but uh, that was a significant engagement because if the ram had gone then the Stur 42 would have been free to push forwards once again and that would have left Jagsaurus in a very awful situation. Now we see the 37mm AA though assisting the infantry as it pushes forwards trying to pin down these rifles and get rid of those. These Luftwaffe Pioneer they've both been pinned down and with the kill onto the uh, Luftwaffe Führer earlier uh, that does create that opportunity so nice job by Jagsaurus to pick off that command unit earlier on but these units in general won't really stop what Vorhati has coming he's got the nag and he's got the U3, ue 630 mg and it's not normally you'd say these units are are really difficult to deal with but when you just brought in a bunch of infantry with no at um, these can actually be really really difficult but here comes a sherman 3 to the rescue and um, that will be able to pick off a lot of these units and it, I think things like the Shermans are actually very very difficult for the 16th Luftwaffe to deal with so unless Vorhati manages to get things like Panzerstrax into awkward situations or or maybe just get in the Pac-38 to really good ambushing positions then the Sherman 3 could definitely rip through the defenses and try and push back but we'll have to wait and see if that actually occurs because of course Vorhati could try and use another HS-129 if he has one in his division he did of course lose one already but um, it's likely that he does have potentially another one, or he could maybe double Focke Wolf 190 and uh, push it with something else. Uh, Pioneers here, they're going to end up uh, pinning down and killing off quite a few of those rifles with their grenade. Uh, these Luftwaffe Jäger coming in as well. On the top side, we do see another AT gun. Is this a Pack 40? It is indeed. And that Pack 40 could be very, very deadly for something like a Ram 2. With the increased veterancy, two-star Pack 40s are scary enough as it is. So that Ram is going to have to back off. Doesn't have the HE really to prevent the Pack 40 from doing a lot of damage there. Also, if this Pack 40 ends up going through this tree line, well, the Sexton will be under fire. This could be very risky, though, for a Pack 40, because if it does fire, then the CMP Tripolston and all of the units here could very easily... Uh, pin down the pack 40 and kill it quick enough and the sexton's already got shots on target so that doesn't help either oh Luftwaffe Jäger here managed to get up in the face of the kangaroo with the help of the smoke from the Luftwaffe Führer I think that's probably the first smoke we've seen though from Vohati he didn't bring in any mortars to provide smoke and I did mention how smoke was something that is quite lacking uh, from the 16th Luftwaffe in general Oh, that pack 40 smacked in the face already. And, well, <laughs> here comes all of the HE fire. That was, I believe, fire position command um, by the looks of things. <laughs> no kill for the pack 40 today. Here comes another HS-129, double focke wall flying about. There is quite a lot of AA support, although saying that, I think the nag's dead. The nag died somewhere. Was it here? No. But the Sherman 3... I guess is the one to take care of that. I hope that's the kangaroo. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out where that nag died. Because that 37mm AA would allow these planes to attack the bottom side. Whereas at the moment, only the top side really is, is covered by AA due to these uh, Vlak 36s. The actual Vlak 43 went down. So 
Yeah, there's a limited amount of AA at the moment. So Bahati's got to be a little bit careful with this engagement. But it's going to go for it. Going to be pressing on to the stag count AA here. Looking for the kill onto that with the rockets. Very cheeky, for actually. But here comes the B3 with the 16 AP shells. And now we see the Spitfire Mark 9 come in onto the tail of the H-129 there. They are going to manage to push back one Spitfire. But now going to be looking to take out the next. Will H-129 coming across? Can it see these units though? It can, but could end up dying to the amount of AA here. This is a three-star Crusader AA Mark II and the CMP Tripolston. It is going to die. HS129 B3 going down. That is not what Vohati would have wanted to see. That was a 200 point airplane that didn't get a single kill. Bombing strike coming in from the Mosquito. Completely misses the mark as the Flak 88 hit the target. Now the Spitfire Mark 9 surely going to be able to finish off this Focke Wolf 190 as it does run out of fuel and is forced to make a run for it, but that is. Yeah, that is gone. So, good job to just sort of prevent some of those airstrikes at the end there from Yag Source, but Vorhati maintaining the ground uh, does ultimately uh, lead to his victory and Yag Source surrendering after 23 minutes and 36 seconds. So, Yag Source, 1,520 kills to 1,350 losses. Uh, I think a lot of those kills came in the late game, which is why it looks as though Yaxos should have been doing better. But as I mentioned at the start, Yaxos found his salient by killing like a couple units at max, whilst Vohati kind of broke down the defense that Yaxos had on the top side. And that meant that uh, Vohati could find a lot more ground in general because he hadn't invested as much in his defense on the other side of the map. Um, so if we have a look at the kills quick, well, Stormtroopers getting a couple kills, but not really finding their effectiveness in this matchup. The Luftwaffe Pioneers are actually pretty strong against the Stormtroopers, and, and microing out the way of the uh, grenades can be pretty tricky sometimes. So it's no surprise that that those engagements didn't really go too well for Yagsource throughout the game. Kangaroo was actually the one to get the Nag kill in the end with the 50 cal. Sexton managed to kill off a Flak 36 and a Flak 43. The Sexton, had it been brought in a little bit earlier, I think may have been a bit more effective. Um, but I think just due to Vohati's like movement of his AA, it did make it very difficult for the Sexton to get on target for a significant amount of time, or at least enough of amount amount of time to get the kills. There's the HS129 going down, there's the Focke-Wolf going down. I think this Focke-Wolf's like 180 points, the HS129 is like 200 points, so that's 380 points at the end of the game there. Let me see the FK going down, the HS129B1 got killed. Whereas a lot of the play, in especially in terms of ground taken, was the early game. And you can see these units are not of much value in general. It's all of the, the late game where the, the expensive units go down. Whereas when we look at uh, Vorhati's side of things, you can see that a lot of the early game units were taken out. The Panstrek taken out, the Command Carrier and Stag Count AA. Uh, the Luftwaffe Jäger managed to take out that Wasp in the end. And the Piet and the Stormtroopers. Really good uh, Luftwaffe Jäger squad there. And we see the Pack 38 taking out a couple more armoured units. Six pounder going down that allowed the Stuff 42s to push through and get a few kills here and there. So again, six pounder going down, Sniper Scouts going down. Black Panzer Bren managed to take out four units of rifles and a rifle leader. Really, really nice Black Panzer Bren there. And again, another Stuff 42 taking that six pounder. So like the amount of points in the early game here killed off by Vohati gave him that uh, sort of leg up in order to just be really irritating towards the late game. Nice kills onto the uh, Spitfires early on with this Focke Wolf 190, but yeah, was bringing it back later on in the skies, unfortunately, did not help him on the ground. So there we have it, a win for Vorhati in this tournament, and uh, yeah, that's all from me. So make sure to check out the Community Balance mod it, link in the description. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.